Welcome to Reread. I have two short stories for you. The first one's from the Star Wars Adventure Journal, uh, number 15. It's called The Great Herdship Heist. Uh, Gutta the Hutt sends Noon and his uh, cool, cool crew called Kales, Sonax, and Dawson to steal uh, from a rival lord, uh, a, a crime lord. He's a BIM. I can't remember his name right now because I didn't write it down. Who is on a herd ship and he's re trying to re recover a box. And Gutta doesn't know what's in the box, but he knows if Bim wants it, then it must be precious, and, and that makes Gutta want to have it. So it's this big adventure where all, you know, Noon and his men, you know, run around the herd ship, you know, avoid disaster. Get, get, it's one big, you know, thief, or what, what's it called? I can't remember what the big thing is. They're, they're trying to steal this big caper. That, that's the word. It's a big caper that's going down, and a lot of adventure happens. And finally, they look it's in the box, and it's a gun. And immediately I remembered the end of this. It's the gun of command. I said that before they figured it out. I went, oh yeah, that's right. They have a gun of command. Now, it's an interesting story. The characters are good. You know, I, I would have liked to have seen more. This was the last in the Star Wars Adventure Journal uh, books to come out. And the author did have a second story. And he got to print that in the Star Wars Gamer, the first issue. He got to print his short story because it is a follow-up sequel. And it is called... Uh, fair prey. And Noon and the gang are back. Uh, they're trying to sell the gun of command, but the guy who is a potential buyer turns out to be someone who is wanting to turn them into gut of the hut because there's a reward for them for skipping out with the gun of command. And so they're on the run from him, and it's another adventure to escape. Meanwhile, though, Dawson is haggling over buying this quay uh, ball. It's like the magic eight ball from Tales from Jabba's Palace. I totally forgot that this made another appearance in the Star Wars Expanded Universe. But they're shaking it every once in a while and it says, you know, cloudy. The answer is yes. No. You know, yeah, whatever, whatever that magic eight ball would say. So that joke keeps going wrong as, he sh as Dawson's shaking it just to kind of see how they're going to, if they're going to get out of this next predicament or what they should do next. And there's a funny scene where uh, one of the pursuers blows up one of his bags in his hand. And Kales looks at Dawson and goes, did that have the quay in it? He went, no, it's in the other bag. She went, darn. Because <laughs> she hates that magic eight ball. Um, it is kind of fun. It, the, both of these stories are very, very long. Oh, man, they're long. They're like 20-something pages. Even in the uh, Star Wars Gamer, that thing was like 15 pages with no pictures. You know, so I was like, wow. So they're pretty thick reads. And they're interesting. I'm sure if he would have been asked, he would have brought uh, Noon in the game back because it seems like he had a lot of fun writing them. And yeah, I probably would have enjoyed another short story. A little bit more humor, though, if you're going to go so many pages in a short story. And that's this second one didn't have, I think that was maybe the only, besides the Quay, there was no other humor as far as I could tell in it. And I mean, it's just a little, you know, adventure. Adventure, again, another caper gone wrong, and they have to find a way out of it. Um, the stories overall are good. They're not great. You don't have to read them. They only connect to each other. But it is kind of cool that the author who wrote the last uh, uh, story in the Star Wars Adventure Journal, or a story in the last Star Wars Adventure Journal, got to complete his second part of the story in a magazine years later. All right, folks, that's it for now. See you next time.